So today I'm going to be doing a nearly full aftermarket 5.1 high kappa build. I say nearly because I am going to use some parts from the base high kappa that I have here, uh, namely the thumb safeties, the rear beaver tail safety, and a couple frame springs and the hammer strut. Aside from that, uh, everything else is as you see here on the table. As always, I am partnered with LA Kappa Customs. Um, if you guys like the video and wanna make your own high kappa or you need to upgrade one that you're already working on, uh, go check them out. There's a link in the description. If you wanna support my channel, you can head on over to my website where I have stickers, patches, beanies, t-shirts, hoodies, all that stuff up there. Since this is an assembly video and some of the parts I need are in the stock high kappa, I'm going to take this apart off camera and I am also going Going to assemble the LA Cap Customs frame off camera as well. Sutton put up a really good video on how to do this, so I'm just going to link that in the description as well. There's no need for me to go over it again. All right, I uh, took apart the stock high kappa, had to get a couple springs because I forgot to get a replacement spring set for this build. Um, mainly the valve knocker spring that's in here. Stole the hammer strut out of the original because I also forgot to get a strut for this build, and I put on a nine ball hexa hammer. Reason you may want to upgrade your hammer is for better durability or in case your stock one breaks. It's very rare but I've seen it happen. And also the feel is a little bit different. It gives you a lighter trigger pull due to the way the teeth are cut um, on the internals. Okay, frame is now complete. Uh, next I need to put in the detents for the safeties. Again I had to steal these from the stock Marui because I did not order replacement or upgraded ones. Um, there are upgraded detents that you can buy. I think there's Airsoft Masterpiece and I think there's AIP. Um, unless you really want stainless steel for some reason, the stock ones work perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Rear safety, stolen from the stock one. I'm going to put that in right there. And then we are going to put in our thumb safety. We're going to slide it down and it needs to rotate into place, but the detent is in the way. So we need to push it out of the way so that it can lock in. Where is it? Oh, shit. Um, as always, when you're working with springs, be careful because you can shoot parts out of your gun. And I've lost one of these before, and I almost did it again because I wasn't being careful enough. Perfect. So, now the um, rear safety is locked in. Side safety is in there. I can't flip it up because uh, it's engaged right now. We'll get to that later. Okay, so this is the LA Kappa Customs competition frame. This is CNC aluminum. You can see down there, they're serialized as well. These are anodized. The anodization is very nice. The thing about the, their finish is it's not really sparkly, but there is a little bit of, um, there's a little bit of shine in it. That's kind of hard to explain until you see it. Um, it looks really good. The reason you may want to upgrade your frame to an aluminum one, uh, the main reason is to save weight. So the stock frame right here, this is a 4.3 frame, this thing, it feels like a brick compared to the aluminum one. It is at least half the weight, probably a little bit more. And I'm going off a of feel with all the extra parts in here as opposed to this. Another reason you may want to get a competition frame over the stock frame is since it is CNC cut, the tolerances are much better than the cast metal that is on the stock Marui High Kappa. And LA Kappa Customs has actually made their rails a little tighter than normal so when you break in your slide on this frame it's going to be nicer overall all right for the next step we're going to do the grip so i have here us custom works check this thing out i got a nice blue grip um, it's painted blue i didn't smell anything on it like spray paint it might be spray painted it might be cerakoted Either way, it's very nice. It feels like the stock plastic, like it should, and it's got some uh, texture grip in here. This is gonna complement uh, the rest of my build very well, which if you haven't figured out by now, it's going to be mostly blue. For this build, I am going with the 
Cow Cow, Trident Sear Spring. These sear springs are really good. They give you a very light trigger pull. Grip screws, forgot to get some, so we stole those off of the base high kappa, and also the screw that's going to attach, well, help attach the frame to the grip. In addition, we have the LA Kappa Customs steel trigger bar. We have an LA Kappa Customs trigger. We got an LA Kappa Customs magwell. And, and we got the Cow Cow Hammer Power Regulator. So what this does is allow you to adjust the tension that is put on to the hammer strut and the hammer, which controls how much force your valve knocker exerts onto your magazine valve. So if you are having issues with light strikes, you can use this kit to increase the tension, which will put more force on your valve, which will allow you to overcome the pressure of the gas and get your gun cycling again. Alternatively, you can use this to very slightly lighten up the pull of your trigger by decreasing the tension on the hammer. It's not super noticeable, but it is there. But if you go too far, then you are going to introduce light striking and your high kappa is not going to cycle. Okay, so first things first, uh, let's do the trigger real quick. The main reason you would want to go with a steel trigger bar is to get a little extra adjustability in your trigger. If you go for the Airsoft Masterpiece version, they have a little tab that lets you adjust the slack on the reset. The LA Kappa version does not have this tab, so I'm not going to be going over it in this video. The second reason you may want to upgrade your trigger bar is the tolerances are a little better, so the pull is smoother. For the trigger, LA Kappa Customs Curved Trigger. Curved or flat does not matter, that is your personal opinion. So let me go ahead and throw this on the trigger bar real quick. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's a giant pain in the ass. So if it is a giant pain in the ass, I'm going to do it off camera. So what we need to do, line these up. Beautiful. Whoops. And then I scratch it like that. <laughs> There's a, the tiniest, tiniest little nick around the hole right here, if you can see it. No one's gonna see that, no one's gonna know. Let's get the grip. We are going to put our trigger in here. Nice and smooth. A Little bit of play, but that's okay. Um, I'd rather have a little bit of play in most parts because if it's too tight, you know, things get caught up and more friction, but this is super smooth. I'm actually surprised how smooth this is. All right, let's attach this grip. Super simple. Slides on like that. Dun, 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 dun. One thing to note, I'm gonna do this a little later. Um, put some blue Loctite on your grip screws, especially if you, ha if you have an aluminum grip. Um, mine on my Airsoft Masterpiece build, they back out all the time. And it's one of those things that I never really remember to check for until I see a screw basically hanging off of the frame. This is not 100% necessary, um, but it is nice to have the extra stability just in case. All right, so I got it all screwed in. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the mag release now. This goes in from the back. This is the stock one. If you do go for an upgrade, it's mostly to get an extended release, uh, which will give you a bigger button out here, or if you wanted a particular color or a combination of both. Okay, next, let's go for the sear spring. For this build, I am going with the Cow Cow Trident sear spring. These sear springs are really good. They give you a very light trigger pull. Make sure your hammer's up so you can flip up your rear safety and get up in here. You want this to be up as well. I'm gonna try and get this. Hopefully I can get this on video. When you put this in, make sure the right two forks are on top of this and this. If one of them slips underneath, it's usually the middle one that slips under. Um, your gun is not gonna function properly. It's not gonna reset or it's not gonna fire. Uh, so on and so forth. I don't tune my sear springs, um, and I don't intend to, but I do know that they are finicky. Okay, 
So, you see how this tong is on top, or this fork is on top, and that fork is on top, so that's good. So we are going to close this, and make sure the strut is going to fit into that little notch right there. So now we're going to put in the hammer power regulator into the stock back strap. So Ellie Kappa recommends no bottom piece. This is the bottom piece. So we're going to throw that. They do four to six mini buffers, and then the light spring, and then the cap. So we got two of the thick washers and two of the, or three of the thin ones in there. I'm going to put my spring up on top. Put our top cap. We're going to put the retaining pin on here and apply pressure while I push this plunger down and then it will push into place and it will retain the assembly. Get your back strap in place, right? I'm going to flip it upside down. You hear it? So it's going to be sitting a little far or a little more lower so that you can slide your back strap into place. And at this point I am going to check and make sure that it is functioning. Uh, once you test it and you know that it is functioning, then you can put in your uh, pin down here. But I have an LA Kappa Customs Magwell, so we're gonna put that on. You know, I don't really find that they help me reload. Uh, maybe they help you, um, but mostly people just put them on because they look cool. Right? Make sure it's lined up. Drop your pin in, hopefully. Yeah, cool. Okay, so there is a tiny bit of wobble. Uh, we're gonna see if the stock base plates fit inside the uh, LA Kappa Customs Magwell. <clears throat> and then we're gonna check if there's any wobble or anything like that. So, the first thing I notice when I put these in, well, that's not bad. It needs a little bit of, a, I don't want to say work, um, it needs to break in a little bit. Once I have it in, there is a little bit of play here, so maybe I will use this little guy to, I guess, shim it up a little bit. A few times of doing this, it's already gotten looser, but I am going to have to break this in a little bit before I field it because the mags aren't free falling out. That was with a 5.1 stock base plate. Let's check the 4.3. 4.3 stock base plate goes right in there. Next step, this, <laughs> this trigger pull is so light. Oh my god. Compared to my Airsoft Masterpiece, this is like nothing. Like actually nothing. This is the Cow Cow aluminum rear sight with the fiber optic rear plate. The aluminum is a little bit lighter than the stock one, but there really is no reason to upgrade it unless, I don't know, maybe you like the finish on the aluminum better if you're building something nice like this. Um, the main reason is to get this rear plate onto there. I do believe that this rear plate also fits the stock high kappa rear sights as well. So I don't think you even need the cow cow rear sight if all you're looking for is this. Let's move on to this upper, man. Let me get this out of the way. This thing looks good. Same color as the frame. Perfect match. This is likely going to be the perfect opportunity to fit the frame to the slide, or the slide to the frame rather, um, before I put everything in the upper. It's much easier when you don't have anything going on. Right off the start, again with those tight tolerances, you start to get resistance right here. But let's just do one of these. Oops. Careful not to scratch your stuff. There we go. There was just a little something. So, 
this is super tight, right? And that's what that's what LA Kappa wants. They'd rather it be tight off the start so you can break it in to make sure that it fits as tight as possible without having any wobble when everything is said and done. So I'm going to put some lube on this and we're gonna work it out. Put a little bit, drop in there, drop in here, just a tiny bit on the top. I'm not spreading it out with my fingers because I wanna see how it spreads as the side is going over it. Oh wow. You can see it makes contact all along the sides. The lube is all the way pushed down. That's a good thing. I mean, just slide's gonna be very stable on there. So again, do this with your slide empty and you're just gonna keep working it. Real quick, while you are working your slide to your frame, make sure after every 30 seconds to a minute or so, you take it off and you check what's going on. So right here on the back, you see how this is scraping? That's fine, it's, it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's breaking in. Um, but this was leaving little shavings on my rail. If I left the shavings inside, if I didn't check, and I kept racking it, there was a possibility of those shavings getting caught in between my slide rails and my frame rails. And if that happens to you, um, it'll cause your slide to seize, like it's gonna lock into place. It's happened to me on my Masterpiece build, and it also happened to a kid at Tech City not too long ago. Um, the only reason I knew how to fix it is because it happened to me before. See that uh, black grime? That's metal shavings. So that's the slide and the frame working together. They're gonna scrape off each other a little bit until it's a perfect fit. At about 15 to 17 minutes of working this thing, it's got a little bit of noise in it. That'll go away. It's not done breaking in. Um, it's going to continue to break in over several weeks as I play with it. Um, yours will too when you build it. <clears throat> this is just the first step, the main step of getting it fitted and making sure that it's okay to field. Um, at this point, you know, it's there. Let me put the rear sight in. I can do that before the blowback housing, right? Do you see that, this little bar down here on the inside? That side should go in first. So um, you're, you're basically, you're gonna put the left side in, in a little notch, and then this leg of the uh, slide is going to press in. Off camera, I just set it in the right spot, and now I am just wiggling it bit by bit. Um, the, the legs of the rear side are scraping off the anodizing on the inside of the slide, um, but I think this one's actually gonna go in very easily. We'll find out when I get to the end, uh, but let me do this real quick. Okay, so that is the rear sight. So next step, uh, we need a blowback housing. Uh, right here, I have the edge low blowback housing. It is in blue. Low blowback uh, means less recoil. So this thing is uh, very much going for a high speed build. Um, basically, I want to get off as many accurate shots as I can as quickly as possible. The reasons for upgrading your blowback housing would be one for the weight. Over the stock Tokyo Marui, these are much, much lighter. And they are also, they also have better efficiency. Um, I believe in some cases you will get an FPS boost. Not a big one, um, but you can get an FPS boost. Um, but the main thing is consistency. Um, shot to shot. An upgraded blowback housing is going to give you less variation in FPS than you would get if you were still with the stock one. And then for the nozzle, I also have an Airsoft Masterpiece Edge nozzle. Um, I've been using the, this nozzle in my AM build for a few months. Never had any problems with it. Um, so why not do another one, yeah? These things are not really a pain, um, but if you haven't done one before, they can be a little confusing because there is a lot of little parts that come in them. And I don't know what the name of the parts are, so don't, 
don't ask me. Uh, nozzle, nozzle parts. <laughs> I'll show you how to put it together though. So first thing, throw your spring in there. Shake it to make sure it gets centered inside. I'm having a problem with the light, but you can see it's not blocking. This is gonna go next, but you need to pay attention to something. So on the, the last piece, this is what's gonna hold uh, the internal parts inside the nozzle. Uh, you see this flat top with the hole in it? That's where your screw's gonna go. And this is the back. So what it's going to do is it's going to, you know, cup this part and keep it from blowing out the back of the nozzle. You see this little notch up here? Um, that's a cutout for the screw that's going into the top. Um, if you get a different brand, it may not have that. Um, but for this one, we're going to make sure that notch is up on top because the screw is going to be coming down in here and we don't want things rubbing. That's how things break. Like a this. So now the spring is holding that all up inside there. Um, this is the fun part. Let me grab my tiny, teeny, tiny screwdriver. Whatever it may be, this one will work. So what you need to do is simultaneously push the parts in so the holes line up and put this screw in the nozzle. It's super fun your first time doing it. Um, I can barely get my pinky in there, I think. Yeah. And so this is gonna be really hard to show on camera. I might be able to. But if you stare down, yeah, stare down that screw hole. I'm moving it right now. You see how the light's disappearing? You need to push it until, oh, just kidding. You can't see the fucking screw hole. because it's not aligned properly. Let me, oops. Let me align it properly, how about that? Okay. What, what? Something weird's going on, hold on. You're gonna take your spring and put it on the end of this piece. Um, you'll notice there is a notch at the top if you're using the edge. Um, if you use a different brand, it might not have it, I'm not sure. Um, but the purpose of that is because the retainer, um, a screw is going to go through this and through the nozzle. <clears throat> so this little notch is going to prevent any kind of rubbing from the opposite end of the screw, um, which would not be good since the nozzle is moving back and forth and has gas going through it, it could blow up. Oh yeah, okay, there was a little ledge to get through. So, if you can, it's gonna be hard to see. I don't think it'll show up on the camera, but I'm using my pinky to depress the internals and line up the screw hole. You gotta make sure it's aligned when you put it in um, because it's very hard to see. And then once you have it in the right spot, take your screw and tighten it down. Um, just snug this up with your fingers. It doesn't have to be super tight. Um, this is uh, just plastic, so it, it's very easy to strip. You can uh, very easily over tighten this screw and screw up your nozzle. So, blowback housing. This goes in like so. There's a leg on the top of it and that leg is gonna ride through this section. So I'm gonna hook that in real quick, and then I'm gonna lube the O-ring here. I'm gonna put a generous drop on it, and I'm gonna let it run down the sides. Okay, and then we're gonna check to make sure it's nice and smooth. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, upgrading your nozzle, um, not necessary. My favorite nozzle is the stock Tokyo Marui. 
Um, if you still have yours and it's not broken, you don't need to upgrade it. Um, they are they're they're my favorite. Um, I've had the least issues with like double feeds or misfeeds with those in general, but they do break eventually. Uh, usually after several months, especially with green gas, um, they just always break. So if you still have your stock one and it's still running great, you don't need to upgrade. Otherwise, pick whichever one you think may or may not be the best based on other people that you talk to or what you just want to try. Uh, but for me, it's just been working out just fine. Next step, nozzle return spring. I'm using the uh, little snaps. These are 150%, I believe. Okay, uh, so when you put these in, oh, just kidding. Usually, when you have a nozzle return spring, there will be one end that's compressed and one end that's looks like this. Uh, both of the ends of this spring are uncompressed. Um, so the point I was going to make is whenever you have a spring, nozzle spring with the compressed end, the compressed end always goes towards this hard plastic in the rear. Uh, but since these are, these appear to be the same on both sides, so I'm just gonna throw it in and we'll see what happens. We're gonna put the blowback housing into the slide. I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on here uh, because my screws tend to loosen themselves over time. Yours probably do too. Um, that's one of the things I always make sure to check every game day to make sure um, there's no issues because if that falls out, you're gonna have some wacky stuff happen too. So we, oops, I kind of just did that while talking. So take your blowback housing <laughs> and it's just gonna slide right in. It's very easy to line up because it only goes in one way and the notches on the blowback housing fit the notches of the slide. You know, there's no wrong way to do it. Just make sure everything meshes well and you're not forcing anything. And then we're gonna put our screw into the back. And then we're gonna check our nozzle return. It's returning. Very nice. Working as intended, yeah? Okay. So now the next step is to do the hop chamber, barrel, and bucking. Okay, so I have two buckings here. I have the LA Kappa Customs Flat Hop Bucking, which I really like. And then here's a Maple Leaf Decepticon, but this is the new silicone version. Um, I tried this once a, a little while ago, and I wasn't really impressed with it. Um, maybe I just got a bad one. Um, but they are softer, and I feel like they didn't work as well as the standard Decepticons. Um, I'll try it again, because I have it. I have one here. Um, but for right now, we're going to put the LA Kappa Green in there. Along with uh, LA Kappa's 5.1 6.00 polished, oh, hand-lapped stainless steel barrel. I haven't used this barrel before. Um, in my other build, I have the 9-ball 6.00, and that thing is amazing. Um, so we'll see how this barrel works out. Um, if it's not as good as a 9-ball, I'll probably switch to the 9-ball. But we'll see. Uh, so this is the Airsoft Masterpiece hop unit. Um, it's one of the first things I recommend if you're upgrading your high kappa is upgrade your barrel first, bucking second, because those give you about 80% of the accuracy that you need and are looking for. Where the Airsoft Masterpiece comes in, in my opinion, is it's it's more stable with the barrel and it's uh, it's better with the, the overall compression from the nozzle going into the bucking. So you're going to see better shot-to-shot -shot accuracy. In my opinion, it is the best on the market at this time until LA Kappa comes out with their hop unit, which is going to be a TDC uh, top, down, top dead center. Um, and it's going to be pretty sick. Let's put this bucking on the barrel, and we are going to install this in here. Sometimes, depending on the cutouts on your barrel, after you place it in, you'll have to give it a, a little tiny tug to get it to seat. Make sure your barrel's seated before you screw everything together, because if it's not, you may bend something. And I'm going to put this hop arm on here. We're going to put the other half on. Oops. I'll make sure everything's inside. Before you screw anything down, pinch it. 
make sure everything's closed. If there's gaps, if something's misaligned, um, like the barrel notches, you're going to have an open gap over here. And if you don't pay attention and just start torquing it down, uh, you can mess something up. Um, I'm not going to do it right now, just in case I need to mess with something. Um, but I do like to put blue Loctite on my hop unit screws, uh, because those are another thing I feel always like to back out on me. After you put it together, look down your hop unit and look at the patch and make sure that it's centered, um, you know, uh, vertically. Um, there is a lot of times a little bit of play in the barrels. So you may be a tiny bit off center, but if you are, you can usually rotate it into place to where it's good. Also, if you have the stock hop-up unit and you don't plan on upgrading it, but you destroyed your hop wheel because of cheap plastic, um, you can buy the AM or the nine ball. They make um, aftermarket wheels and you can drop those in there. I think the nine balls um, polymer, um, but the AM is brass. So with the inner barrel and uh, hop-up assembly complete. Now we need an outer barrel. I went with the LA Kappa Customs Tornado in black. This is a 5-1 length because I have a 5-1 slide. The reason you may want to upgrade your barrel, um, the fairly obvious one is because you can get a threaded barrel so you can hook up a tracer to the end of your high kappa if you are an indoor player or if you play at nighttime. With the LA Kappa one, came with a bunch of O-rings. Um, I think these are barrel stabilizers. And so I'm going to try and put one in here real quick. Again, I have, I'm going through this build for the first time with you guys. So we're learning things together. I think I'm just going to push it through. Yep. Yeah. Okay. No rattle. It's, it's right here on the end. It's sitting right on the edge, holding the end of the barrel. Um, that should help with shot to shot stability. Man, this thing looks cool. All right, uh, so we are going to put this in the slide like so. Let's back this all the way out here. And jeez, look at this thing, man. All right, for the guide plug, I went with the LA Kappa Customs 4.3 aluminum. Um, it comes with this Delrin ring. I think it helps to protect the inside. I'm just gonna throw it in there. Um, I'll let you know what I think. Um, for the guide rod, I have a 5.1 LA Kappa guide rod. This also has the same styling as the outer barrel, which is super cool. And for the recoil spring, uh, we got a Waldo Customs 130% Snappy Boy. This is the one that I run in my Airsoft Masterpiece build. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, it feels right to me, I like it. Um, you can go 150, you can go 110. Um, I believe the higher you go in strength, the less recoil you feel. If you are running a stock slide still, upgrade to a 150 and um, your plastic slide will last for a long time. LA Kappa Customs Short Stroke Kit. This is my first time using this kit. Um, I had only used Cow Cow before. So we will see how these feel. With the Cow Cow kit, they have different colors and each color has a different hardness. So like some will be squishy and some will be really firm. Um, with these, they feel somewhat the same. Um, but the difference is these darker green ones are thinner. So with the Cow Cow and I think AM2, they're all the same thickness. So since you have fat ones and thick ones, you can fine tune your short, your short stroke better. So we're going to put some of this on here uh, first things first washer always goes first and then let's get this let's get the guide plug Ooh -wee. okay oh this part's always fun make sure you don't let go you're gonna shoot your parts all over the room and so this is how I put the guide rod in squeeze it and I put the edge of the guide plug up against the edge of the slide and then I'm gonna use my thumb to get that most of the way there and oh this is a lot of short stroke buffers okay so now I have this uh, where it should be and give it a little push and the front will shoot forward I'm curious to see if this is going to cycle well, not cycle, but I'm curious to see if it's going to feed like this. 
I've had people ask me, you know, I short stroke my gun and now it doesn't feed BBs. What's going on? Um, nine times out of ten, it's because you have too many buffers in. Before I throw this on, I'm going to put a tiny bit of lube and I'll show you guys how I lube my pistols. It doesn't take much. A lot of people dump a ton of lube on their stuff. Um, not me. So I'm going to put a drop on in here and a drop on here. And I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to coat the rail with it. You don't need lube dripping off of your gun. As long as it is on the metal, you're good. And I'm also going to do it on the sides right here. Okay. For the slide catch, I went with the AIP that's got the thumb rest on it. I've never used a thumb rest before, but one of my friends let me hold his and it felt pretty good, so I wanted to try it. If you want to upgrade your slide stop, they make extended ones. If you don't short stroke and um, you got, like the slide to lock back and you want an easier release, um, you can do that. Or if you want a specific color. So we are going to do this the right way. Oh shit, no, that's too many buffers. Look. I can't get... This, this little nub here needs to be clear to go through. Notice I'm missing something. I'm gonna put the mag release back in. <laughs> I took it out to disassemble everything. Oh man, look at this thing. Mag in. Yep, nozzle all the way back. <laughs> so what had happened was I had gotten the configuration wrong for the hammer power regulator. The power going to the hammer was so light that it was it was doing light strikes. So it wasn't expelling enough gas to cycle the pistol. I switched to the top and bottom caps, the heavy spring, and then I put four buffers inside. Um, two of the thicker ones and two of the thinner ones. All right, so let me throw a mag in this thing real quick and you can see it cycle. Um, this trigger is so goddamn light, it's ridiculous. Okay, so I'm gonna throw some BBs in it real quick, show you guys that it cycles, that it feeds all that good stuff. Mag's in there, yep. All right, so that wraps up this video. Hopefully it was helpful to you in building or upgrading your high kappa, and hopefully I answered some questions for you along the way. If I missed anything or there's something else that you want the answer to, just let me know down in the comments and I'll let you know what I think. So with that, I'll see you guys on the next video.